Sota Nerd. All right, welcome back to the Soda Nerds, the show where we talk about comic books, collectibles, and pop culture. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Today we have a special episode because we have a special guest, local comic book artist. Tim Oldland is in the house with us. We're going to talk some comics today. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of his history. He's got a new comic book coming out as well, so we're gonna we're gonna tap into that a little bit. But hey, Tim, great to have you. Thanks for yes, joining us. This is awesome. Yeah, for sure. So you are local, as we said. Yep. Uh, what is that, Cambridge area then? Yep, Cambridge. Have you always been in the area? You, you grew up, um, born and raised soda boy? Uh, no. I'm, uh, <laughs> I grew up in Utah. Park, oh, okay. Park City, Utah. Yeah. And uh, I met my wife out there. She grew up in East Bethel. Oh, so really? She's okay, cool. Minnesota. Yeah. And we lived out there for a bit. And, uh, um, I just started working freelance so we could live anywhere and yeah. she wanted to be close to the family and that's how we got out here. For sure. So she's the one who's had to introduce you to all that is Minnesota. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, before I met her, all I really knew was like Bobby's World and Grumpy Old Men, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and Fargo. Oh, yeah. And and uh, come to find out, it's not like those mm -mm. things. And. And you know it as uh, Duck Duck Goose. Yes. Is that what it is? Yep. My daughter came my daughter came up the stairs yesterday and we were all sitting around the kitchen table. She's four years old. She was like, Duck, duck, goose on mine and my wife's head. And we both whipped our heads and looked at her and we we're like, Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Where <laughs> where on earth did you hear goose? And my wife looks at me, she's like, I it's probably the YouTube channel she watched. So I'm like, No more YouTube. We're done. <laughs> it is gray duck, little child. It is, is not funny. goose. It is blasphemy. It is. People who grew up in Minnesota, yeah. it's blasphemy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like and I found that out quick with my wife. Anytime that came up, it was always gray duck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is so, the gray duck. It is not. I'm like, whoa. It's amazing how that, that. It's amazing how it took like the national mm -hmm. stage, what, 2017 to the Super Bowl? Like, it it literally was national, probably global news that we were that different. The only state in the country, yeah. right? Yeah. That is pretty funny. The only state in the country that does the goose. Yeah. I mean, and, the and, duck. And, yeah. now, and now we have gray duck vodka, which is. Whatever is we that... won't we won't talk about creative. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Chad Greenway. I won't I won't yeah. rip your vodka on our <laughs> on our podcast here. But yeah, Tim, it's uh, so you are a comic book artist. Yes. How long have you been doing comics? Yeah. Um, I grew up loving comics, and uh, I always wanted to be a comic artist, but just life takes you in different directions, and you got to pay bills, and you got yeah. kids, and all that stuff, and. Uh, I mean, and then also, I think uh, comics is probably one of the hardest things to do mm. as an artist because yeah. you got to do so many things. You got to design characters. You got to tell story. You got to, um, I mean, there's so many different things you got to learn. You got to draw well, at least well enough that people um, to hold their interest and stuff. So, I mean, I think it takes a while to learn how to draw and do all that stuff and and I was doing that, and <clears throat> I don't know if I ever just really never like, okay, hey, I'm going to do it right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it now. But uh, it just seemed like recently it was like, okay, hey, I'm getting older. <laughs> I got to do this if I want to ever yeah. do this, right? And things just kind of all fell into place for me. And uh, I got a comic coming out. Yeah. So hopefully, I mean, I do freelance work. I do... Uh, freelance illustration for products and stuff and hopefully i can get some work after this book in different areas yeah you know comics wise just kind of a portfolio to yeah. hey this is what i can do to continue doing comics you know because I, I i mean i love all the other stuff but i like to do this full-time yeah comics, so this is kind of the run yeah and then also i mean if you ask i mean it's changed so much over the years of how to get into comics but i think nowadays it's like if you want to get into comics, you don't take your portfolio around and show people and say, oh, can I, can you hire me? You got to do a comic. Yeah. And say, look, I did this, you know, and that's how you break in, I guess. I mean. Yeah. It's more than just, I can draw. It's, 
I can draw and craft a story yeah. and one that you're going to be engaged with and that you're going to like. Yeah. And, okay, now now hire me. I want yeah. I want to do some more. I can actually do the comic. So yes, yeah, exactly. So yeah. your new comic coming out is called Beware the Eye of Odin. Um, yes. and that comes out in June. Mm -hmm. But what kind of, can you give us kind of like a premise of the story yeah. or go into it a little bit? <clears throat> well, it's kind of based on a world um, um, of Norse mythology. Hmm. Um, I don't know if there's a specific time, but it's like, a, it's kind of like a fa fantasy era. And it's about a Viking, uh, three Vikings that live in a village and things occur that, um, you know, cast them into an adventure. So, I mean, essentially there's a, there's a lot of, uh, Norse mythology. That's kind of like the basis, the foundation to the story. Yeah. And, uh, you don't really necessarily need to know that stuff, but it, it just kind of like creates a depth of, of, uh, like a, a starting point. Yeah. 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 So I mean, so then, then uh, the story is that this frost giant or this prince of this Viking village kills a frost giant. Some okay. frost giant shows up in his village and yeah. kills it. And it, it's sickly. And on this frost giant, he finds this eye, which is the eye of Odin. Oh, boy. And so essentially this frost giant stole it from the frost giant king. And there's a curse on it that whoever is in possession of it has to return it to its rightful owner or he'll die of boils and sickness, right? Oh, geez. So then he, he knows this, and so he's like, well, I got to return this to the Frost Giant King. So so your, I, so your main character here is stumbling across this Eye of Odin, un, unfortunately falls into his lap, yeah. and now he's got to go on a quest to yeah. bring it back. Otherwise, he's going to face a nice... Yeah. Uh, Nice, slow, painful yeah. death. Yes. And, the, and then the players are, so this main character, Helgi, and he's kind of skeptical of all this stuff. And so when the frost giant shows up, he's like, well, is all this stuff true? Yeah. So he's kind of finding that out. And then amongst the village is a one-armed blacksmith who uh, he's... Uh, because he's lost his arm, he doesn't go with the Vikings out on their raids or on their adventures. He has to stay at the village. And so he's battling over, he wants to be a warrior and he wants to die in battle so he can go to Valhalla. And so he um, joins with Helgi. He wants to go into this adventure. And his goal is essentially to prove to himself that he's still a warrior. Hmm. And then the third person is the village crazy girl who she thinks she's a Valkyrie and she's trying to convince everyone and everyone's just like, you're crazy. What's going on here? <laughs> she, she tries to follow them and they're like, no, you're not coming. Yeah. And so eventually, so essentially Helgi's got to take this eye back to, um, the frost giant King. So Helgi's your main character <clears throat> then. Yeah. Awesome. So we get to all uh, embark on this journey with Helgi then and see yeah. if uh, see if they can get that eye back. Yeah. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Ooh, boy. No, it sounds good, man. I love it. I love the premise of it. Uh, Jeff, you are you are definitely stroking his heartstrings with the yeah. whole the whole background of your story oh, yeah. and, and the, the heritage <laughs> to it for sure. OK. Yeah. So um, love the comic art already from what i've seen it's Thanks. every single thing at the table during the free comic book day was it was right up my interest okay, okay? um and and i noticed your shirt and mm -hmm. it says brothers of metal and i was doing some facebook stock not facebook it was instagram stocking yeah. and, and i seen you done a bunch of art with with that one specific and then there was the one with the band and there were some others yeah. did you want to share just a little bit about yeah so when I was doing, I mean, I, um, I love Vikings because, um, that's my heritage. My father's from Norway. I mean, half my family lives there and, uh, most of my m mother's heritage from Norway. And my dad would always tell stories of, of Vikings and trolls. And 
I mean, some of these stories are just like they're fairy tales over there mm-hmm. that they, they pass on. And so that's always been a part of my upbringing. And so I've always liked that. And when I was drawing this book, I mean, I love metal. And when I was drawing this book, I was listening to a lot of like Viking, like Norwegian folk metal or Norwegian folk music. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> from there, it explored into metal. I found a Swedish band called uh, Sabaton, which is, they sing like, uh, like war history. And uh, from there, I found all these amazing bands that are, I mean, I don't know what to call them, but it, they're like, it's like Viking metal. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, it's almost like Viking folk music with metal. And uh, these are one of the, Brothers of Metal was some of my favorite ones, right? So anyways, um, they had an album come out and I was just like, this is the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> because it's not, I mean, it's not like dark uh, creepy metal. It's like power metal. It's like, let's go battle. Let's go kick some, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, uh, there's this one song that I, uh, heard and it's called, uh, the prophecy of Ragnarok. And, uh, I was like, this is amazing. And it, every time I listen to that song, it gives me goosebumps. And, uh, <clears throat> so then, I mean, if, if you want to listen to them, listen to that song first. If you go on YouTube, listen to the lyric or see the, Watch the lyric version first because all their videos are kind of corny. <laughs> uh, they don't take this else too seriously. But um, they sing about Norse mythology and Vikings, and um, it's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. So I definitely would check them out. But I found them, and I was like, these guys are amazing. And I was doing shirt designs and uh, tagged the lead singer and said like, it'd be cool to do a shirt for you guys. And then like a week later, got an email from him, right. Or a message from him. And I talked with him and he was really cool. And I did some shirts for him and, um, became friends with him and stuff and just kind of keep my eye on them. And I don't know, they're really cool. That is cool. It's it, it is. Um, I think it's interesting how, how you were able to connect with some people from, from your homeland in a sense, you know, you said they were from Sweden, right? Yeah. Yeah. But still, I mean, that's why I love Norse mythology and I love Thor and, you know, I'm Swedish or origins, you know, obviously we're not as strong as the Norwegians, but you know, (laughs) but we're we're still kind of Vikings, right? Well, it's like, uh, you got the Danes, the Swedes and the Norwegians and the Danes, and the Norwegians make fun of the Swedes, yeah, no right? <laughs> and the Swedes, make, yeah, and the Swedes make fun of them. Yep. But um, language-wise, um, Norwe- Norwegians can understand Swedes, and Swedes can understand Norwegian, and no one can understand the Danes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I did some I did some research, and uh, whenever I tell people I like Norwegian heritage. I never say Swedish heritage, you know, or like Vikings, because it's like they're the the Swedes are the jokes of the Vikings. So, um, we were talking when at when at um I'm sorry I'm lost for thought here, but when we were sitting at the comic book day, free comic yeah. book day, and I was looking through your artwork and I noticed all the trolls, and I remember I had said to you like, hey, this reminds me of my one of my favorite artists of like ever, you know, and um. You're like, I think you said, like, who was that? And I said, well, he's pretty old, like 1920s or whatever. And you, you knew right away. Yeah. John Bauer. Yeah. Right. Um, And I, to be honest, dude, to to find somebody else who actually knows of this guy. Yeah. (laughs) And liked his art. I was like, okay, that's, that's that's cool. That's, that's unnormal, you know, but um, you said, do you want to just share some of what you, what you thought of him or yeah i mean i loved i I love his art i actually the some of the troll designs in my book i was looking at him and uh, two other um norwegian artists and the thing is is there's there's a lot of like fairy tale style stories that incorporate trolls and and these different mystical things that not a lot of Americans know about, Mm -hmm. but they are amazing, you know? And that's what some of these uh, images that you um, saw John Mm -hmm. Bauer doing, there's some of these stories, right? And uh, 
I mean, when it's cold and you're you're all sitting inside the house and you can't really go outside, they just tell stories. And I think that was the Norwegian or or Swedish, you know, Scandinavian culture. That yep. was like a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and so yeah, some of these images are so old, and it just it just proves that how old these stories actually are. Yeah, it's fun to see. It's fun to see it like a new design style, mm. and it, because. It, it is interesting. You know, we grew up with Lord of the Rings. We grew up with The Hobbit and stuff. And then to see a comic book, kind of a new comic book style of this story or yeah. similar story, I think it's really exciting. Uh, I'm I'm on the pull list at the Gamers Den. I'm ready to get <laughs> yeah, my comic sweet, book, you know. Man. Yeah, so so um, what else were we? Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, the, your Mars attacks. Yeah. You have quite a bit of Mars attacks uh, art. Are they like NFTs or what are you doing with those things? Well, I'm like, <laughs> they were sketch cards. Okay. So they did, um, they did a new series called Mars Attacks Uprising, and it was a Kickstarter actually, and a independent company. I don't, I don't remember the total like things, but they they teamed up with Tops and they kickstarted a new series of Mars Attacks, and there's a lot of hardcore Mars Attacks followers. And I was contacted to do some, some card art. So I did a lot of original cards for them. I think I did like 70 or something cards or uh, sketch cards. Yeah. And they don't pay a whole lot, but I love Mars Attacks. And I love the, like, I don't know, the 40, 50s, kind of like kitschy sci-fi vibe. Yep. You know, that's, that's part of it. Yeah, I liked seeing the. There's a lot of the the hot rods, right? And that's even a series, right? Like yeah, hot rods, Mars Attack, or something. Yeah, we, we, what was it? It was like, hot, um, I don't remember what it was, but it was like a separate line. It yeah, was like hot rods, Mars motors. That's what yes, it was. yeah. So, no. so it was like Jim. <laughs> it was like uh, Big Daddy Roth. Yes, fused with Mars Attack. <laughs> yeah. So it's even better. It's even like yes, yeah. It's it, even, it, it was, it, it's cool to see that artwork, you know, and, and, um, I, I don't know, for some reason I, I, that I think I'm picking up kind of what you like to do because man, it's like everything I've seen you do, um, even like the fifties era, it was like, um, I like guess, what was it like a sea creature chick or something, yep. you know, it just, all that stuff is like so cool and interesting to me. I'm like, you got to start selling NFTs or something yeah. like you have to start, <laughs> There's money to be made. I like all these old properties like Universal Monsters and old oh, sci-fi, yeah. you know, cheesy movies. And I mean, I think if you, I don't know, I remember who was a concept artist said that you can take something old and HD it, like high def oh, it, yeah. like update it. Yeah. And I mean, just knowing that concept um, just like sparks creativity for yeah. me. So obviously like an old kitschy like, sci-fi poster i can be like oh yeah the one that, with the your one with frankenstein and and uh, is it the woman frankenstein and stuff and they're standing in front of a traeger grill with like brains in it or <laughs> yeah. something like oh my gosh it's so clever uh, that's great yeah, yeah it's 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 good is that is that kind of like what you is that what you came up with comic book wise then like was the universal monsters kind of what you were super into or what kind of comics were you reading when you were younger oh um well actually i brought some we'd love but to see them, see them Tim. we can absolutely see them <laughs> right. yeah no i was uh let's see here 1990 and this is anybody who is listening to the podcast you're gonna have to swing over to youtube to, <clears throat> yes. to see tim's comics he's got here so i brought some because I, I i got that question once and i was like i'll just bring them so first comic i ever got was in 1990 i was on a vacation in the tetons mm. and found it at a convenience store and it was captain america number 372 streets of poison right and i had a hard time reading and well, i didn't like it and my mom bought me this and said only if you read it i had to sit there and read it with her yeah and i read it through and i got to the end and captain america is tracking these drug people right and these these drug dealers and he breaks into this warehouse goes in this dark room and there's one guy in there and he's got this bomb in his hand and he pushes it right 
And then the next, the last panel is like the place exploding. And then I turn the page to find out what happens next, you know, and it's like to be continued. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I was pissed. <laughs> right. So then I got my first flavor of, okay, I got to get the next Captain America. What happened to him? And that was, I mean, that's Ron Lim, which I love. Some people don't like him, but I mean, I don't see why I love him. And I saw him at a comic convention and I told him this is his was my first comic and he drew me a picture on the back oh board that is sweet of Captain that America awesome. and I didn't I mean he just did it for me because I said this is what got me into comics yeah that is awesome so that was my first one and then the next ones was um Spider-Man uh Revenge of the Sinister Six that series oh yeah, oh, yeah. yep and at this point I didn't know who Todd McFarlane was and Eric Larson followed Todd McFarlane, and I think he saw that the success of that style, and so he took certain things and kind of ran with them yeah. to his own style. And I actually like his take on Spider-Man better than McFarlane, which is probably not a lot of people mm. think that. But this one was, I think the first one out of this series is this issue 21, where it's Deathlock and Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Yep. And like Cyborg <laughs> Spider-Man. Yep. And... I saw that, blew my mind. I think I was in fourth grade. My friend had three of these issues. I saw that and I was like, they can do that to Spider-Man? What? And I remember he was showing me and we were like all like pumped and the teacher come up and took his comics. Oh, geez. Like I was so excited the teacher took his comics. So he didn't get them till the end of the year. Oh, and put them in the, in the drawer of all the toys, you know, that they take. Oh, gosh. But I found those at a convenience store and I had to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> but those were my first comics, and those were that was what just made me be like, I gotta do this. Yeah. So you first, so you started reading. You grabbed them, started reading. Love that. And then I, when did the switch flip where it was like, I, I have to do comics of my own. Well, I have I've to always, make these of my own. Yeah, yeah. I've always drawn. I always like drawing. I yeah. draw like things from cartoons and books that I liked. And comics was like, oh, people draw these. Maybe <laughs> mm-hmm. I can do this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know. And I can tell my own stories. And I remember that year I drew my own comic and it was like this anthropomorphic sci-fi thing. And it was like 25 pages and I sold it to some kid oh, no in way. my class for like a couple bucks. <laughs> I was like, $2? <laughs> and I still wonder about that, what happened to that first comic I drew. But uh, So what, what age was that? I think I was like nine. So you have been a, a, a te- from technical terms... You've been a professional comic book <laughs> artist Whoa. since age nine. Holy cow, I didn't realize that. Oh, look at that. And now the IRS is knocking because they oh, want 30% geez. of that two bucks. <laughs> Interest. Uh, that is, yeah, no kidding. So that is awesome. So you basically, it was from the second you read a comic. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm doing these my own. Yeah. Yep. And then Ninja Turtles, and then you find out, oh, wait, this cartoon was actually a comic. Yeah. You know, and then from there, oh, wait, wait. These comics, these Ninja Turtle comics are serious. They're all red and, oh, man, they mm. kill people and they swear. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we got to get those. You know, me and my brother and, you know, I think 80s, 90s was a really good time to like comics because you, mm-hmm. you had cartoons fueling your fire and He-Man was a huge thing that kind of like yeah. primed the pump for when you got older into all these other things. And then and then you're, you're like a preteen, teenager and then image happens and mm-hmm. you're like what these comics are even better oh my gosh my <laughs> mind's exploding look at these guns and pouches and so well and even with ninja turtles uh, just to go back on that that's got to be an inspiring story in itself for anybody who's creating yeah. comics because they like i'm assuming most comic book artists even when they start out is they could not find anybody to publish that for them yeah so they pitched in their own money. I think they said they printed like 300 copies of it yeah. and pushed it out on their own and then it blew up. Yeah, so that's that was insane. <clears throat> that was perfect circumstances. The yeah. thing too is with those guys is that's like, that's like their version of Daredevil, like the Frank Miller Daredevil. Oh yeah. And they're like, oh, we got to do this. And it definitely has vibes from that. It doesn't look like a Marvel comic, but that's okay. Cause it's its own thing. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely like the passion in there and so I it's mean, it's just been it's been a lifelong endeavor basically pretty much yeah yeah so who were your uh 
who are your favorite characters then grow, growing up there? Growing up? I'm assuming Thor was thrown in there. Would that be? Well, I like Thor, but not really. Oh. When I was a kid, like my dad would tell me stories of the real Thor, mm -hmm. like mythology. Yeah. And he had red hair, a red beard, right? Yeah. And when I saw the Marvel Thor, I was just like, what is this McDonald's <laughs> Thor? Come on. <laughs> right? But, I mean, I've grown to love him and see, like, uh, the inspiration they took in those stories. I mean, yeah. Walt Simonson, um, those are my favorite sto uh, Thor stories. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my uh, favorite characters as a kid... Um, Who's, whose phone is going off? It's me. Is that you? It's a <laughs> unreal. It's on air, It's on airplane mode. I got. It's on airplane mode. Silenced. Yet, yet it's still ringing. <laughs> unreal. My gosh. We got. Hey, we we got your phone going over here, and Tim's looking over here at me as I. Tim, if you see me yawn, <laughs> don't take offense. Nobody in this room. I have like a five week old baby at home, so oh, yeah. I don't sleep that much. Mean, so meanwhile, poor I Ben. So if I yawn a lot, that's poor the, Ben standing up to the side, just shaking his head in disgust. My phone's going up. He just he just wants to spend time talking to Tim. Ben <laughs> Ben specifically asked before we start this. Everybody silence their phones. We all got so. <laughs> You're gonna pull us together, guys. If it was gonna be anybody, it'd be the all tongue sitting to my left over here that the phone would be going off with. Shut up. Unreal. <laughs> Dang it. Unreal. Okay, so you uh, characters. Yeah. Uh yeah, I mean, I think Captain America. He's was, your guy. He's my guy. Um, and Batman. Okay. Uh yeah. Those are favorite superhero characters, really. So really. Captain America and the only good thing to come out of DC. That sums it up. Yeah, that's mm. pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean that was it growing mm -hmm. up. It was like yeah. Marvel. I love the X Men for and sure, and it just seemed like all the other characters in DC were uh, a little bit soft. Yeah, in the eighties, nineties. You know? you know what though? DC Batman during our era, when Harley Quinn came out though, that was like mm -hmm. that was different though. And it's interesting yeah. how how like that Batman alone. I would watch that as much as I'd watch the X-Men. Yeah. It's just Batman by himself. The other one was a greater story probably because it was a continuation. Yeah. Um, and I was happy to see when they, they did the the remake of that for Disney+. Plus. <clears throat> of yeah. which one? They're doing the, the X-Men. It's like X-Men 92 or oh, something. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. um, it's yeah, cool. Batman the Animated Series, huge inspiration. I like how every story could live on its own, you yeah. know? And, uh, man, that was some good storytelling for cartoons. For and sure. Dark. You know? Dark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd good, love though. that. Yeah. Favorite? Do you have a favorite that you can think favorite of? Favorite episode? Yeah. Oh, geez. There's one that stands out specifically for me, and it's really? uh, Mr. Freeze. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Heart that of, one at all. What was it? Heart of Ice? Yeah. That yeah. was dark for yeah. kids, like little yeah. like seven, eight year olds watching that. That it's was like... a good one. I mean, there's so many. I have, I have them, and I watched, I've watched them a lot. And geez, what episodes that I are my favorite? I mean, Clayface was amazing. Mm -hmm. That whole feat of Clayface, um, the Great Ghost. I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah, yeah. there are. There are. Yep. I don't know if I have a favorite one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I know. It just it just came to me that the you know. Are you, was, are you talking about the cartoon or the Arnold it's Schwarzenegger the cartoon? cartoon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, that's of course Our, the favorite. He just loves Arnold. <laughs> You've got to chill out. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The, what was the the one with Hard Act? The oh man, what was it? The the uh, I don't remember the title, but I've got this Hard Act figure. It's Batman. Okay. It's Hard Act. He's got the red eyes. And uh, my five-year-old is horrified of that. <laughs> I try. He loves the Batman anime series, yeah. and I try to show him that episode. Horrified. No. And then, and then that even that figure, he sees it up on my shelf, and he's like, <laughs> "What yeah, is he, that?" He was freaked out, and I think it's just kind of the the thought that wait, that's not really Batman. That's not really a human. That's a robot. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I, I get a kick out of it. I just say, you better not go in my office. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's in there. Do you, do you got the, or I'm assuming you collect as well. Oh, yeah. You got a pretty decent collection going? All but, right. I, w I mean, I wouldn't call myself an action figure collector, collector, but maybe. I mean, I got a lot of the animated series Batman figures. Mm. And I got a few, I mean, 
I got a few figures. I've um, I really love Muck Man from Ninja oh, Turtles. Yeah. So I have every single <laughs> version of him except for yeah. um, the one that like the Nickelodeon CG yeah series. I never really watched that, but uh, something about the '80s slime like Mad Ball yeah. era that had that <laughs> yeah, appeal, yeah. and I have a few Mad Balls. So I still have my football Mad Ball. So are you like a man thing and like a swamp thing fan too? Oh, um, not really. Not really. Not really. Like the... I mean, I think they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't really explored them too much. You, okay. you seem like a Toxic Avenger kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like that cartoon. That. Yeah. yeah. I remember I saw the cartoon first and my dad showed me the movie and I was like, what the? And then, you know, there's boobies and stuff in it. Yeah. And I'm just being like, oh, what the heck? I think... Uh, comic I, book world is amazing. The original, the original, like, budget was the same for our studio. Oh, really? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. That, that, first to- it. <laughs> that first Toxic Avenger was pretty, it was pretty interesting. It was yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, when you see that as a kid... I don't know if you should see it as kid, <laughs> but your mind like makes it better than it actually oh, is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, what? That guy was a nerd and look how buff he is. <laughs> His face is kind of messed up though. So I got to ask everybody. So as an artist, as a creator, everybody's got their own thing that they do, right? Art is a subjective, but uh, mm-hmm. the process when you're, when, even when you're creating Beware of the Eye of Odin or anything that yeah. you've done in the past, do you have a specific process that you kind of, or a headspace you got to get into before you're putting, you know, pen to paper. Um. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, is you, it is it the the loud Nordic metal music blasted in your ear while you're? Yeah. I mean, that's that kind of fuels it. I do that yeah. when I'm inking, when I'm drawing. I do page layouts. I actually have to think about yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of moving things around. It's like a it's like a big puzzle, right? Um. I don't really play loud music because I just I can't think. So that's when like the folk play like Norwegian folk music, yeah. or, you know, or, um, what, I mean, what was the band that, uh, oh man, the brand, the band that did the, the title song for the Vikings series, mm. they have some really cool music. That's kind of, uh, kind of droning. Yeah. That's really like gets you in a moan, in a, in a zone. So I don't know, music really. Um, is there a specific, you got a studio that you like to do it in? It's, so what are you doing? You got to grab like a, like a cup of coffee or tea or something, sit down, lock yourself in. Yeah. Kind of, kind of walk us through a little bit. Yeah. What is it? Well, okay. So I have, I have two little kids and <laughs> that's challenging. <laughs> I work freelance. And so my wife has a job and she works during the day mm-hmm. and I watch the kids during the day. And then at night, I would I would work on this comic from like if I was lucky seven to three a.m. More realistically, more, most often it was like nine mm. to three because I had put my kids to bed. So it was like it was rough, man. Yeah, and I would get hardly any sleep, and you know the kids would wake up at six thirty, so we go to bed at three and then wake up at six thirty. So I mean, I did that because I was like, man, I'm getting older. I have to do this comic and I can't let anything else get in the way. And I would not suggest it to anyone (laughs) because I mean, I was like forgetting things and my short term memory was going to crap. And, uh, I mean, it was just like a sacrifice to get done. Yeah. So, I mean, once, once you get the kids to bed and all that and be like, ah, and I have some time and it's like, Hey, let's do it. Go in my studio and work all night long. And then, uh, Eventually it got done and I slept for a, a long time. I mean, I slept at like yeah. go to bed at 8.30 and then yeah. wake up at 6 or whatever. <laughs> How long did it take you, this Beware the Eye of Odin, from kind of like idea concept to last panel? Um, A long time because I started it. We we started it. So the writer was is Doug Wagner. And uh, he he would do a script when he had, he had time. And we would meet and talk about it. And then he eventually finished the script. And so then I would be like doing it when I'd have extra time between jobs and stuff. So it was like a stop and go thing. Mm -hmm. And eventually, essentially it was like, okay, let's do a web comic, put it online for free. And 
hopefully there's popularity and then and then maybe I can get some work out of that. And then uh, it just was so like dragged down by other work. It was just a slow process, right? So I just, just kept chipping, kept chipping. And then actually when I moved to Minnesota, I was like, hey, I got to stay up all night and do this as much as I can and just really like focus and crack the whip. And eventually it got done. And uh, yeah, it was rough. So hopefully I can get some paid work where I can actually like set aside some time during the day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, do- more of it, uh- an actual attainable schedule yeah. to crank out some yeah. some stories. So for anybody that's listening that maybe doesn't know the process of a comic or maybe what goes into creating a comic yeah. book, you mentioned that you had somebody working with you that was the writer. What are the what are the different roles that go into creating a comic, creating a comic. and then which ones are you Okay, yeah. Which ones were you doing for the Eye of Odin? So in the beginning I was gonna do everything except for writing. Okay. So I work with Doug Wagner, who's had, he he's written a lot of comics. He's written Batman. He has a lot of his um, image comics that he's putting out through 12 Gauge, <coughs> which you've, the, um, some of them, the biggest one is The Ride. And then uh, most recently, there's a series called Plastic. And then the next one's called Vinyl. And they're kind of like, they're, they're, uh, those ones are kind of like, well, vinyl is like if the Aven- if the Avengers or the Justice League were serial killers, hmm. right? And not not necessarily superheroes, but they all had their own net, uh, uh, I don't know, niche, right? Yeah, yep. And uh, that's interesting. So, anyways, he, I forget the question. Yeah, you got the just, just yeah, just the different roles that are going yeah. in going into a comic for maybe somebody that that doesn't know. So, like we hear penciler, we hear inker, yeah. we hear writer. Like what do those kind of roles? What falls underneath yeah. that? You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. So he wrote the script, and it's like a movie script. Yeah. And then he gives that to me, and then my process is I do small thumbnails of the page, and uh, pretty much like storyboard it out through the small, small versions, yeah. right? Cause it takes less time. And then I take that and blow it up and refine it, you know? And then I, I refine that on my Cintiq and then I print that out and then tighten it up with pencil and then ink it. Right. So then that's the drawing process. Yeah. So you're really adding like the visual aspect yeah. to, like, to the script that was written. The, yeah. You're, you're bringing visualization to the story. Yeah. Like storytelling, like it's, it's like the director. Yeah, it's like for the, sure. The director, cinematographer, uh, character designer. It's all those things. Lighting, and then. Uh, so it's everything I do that Jeff does none of. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Every, everything's done when I get here, and the videos are up. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. Yeah. Keep going. So then that's. I mean, that's the drawing part, and then from there, there can be inkers. If you just pencil it, you yeah. pass that along to inkers. And they ink it and then colorist they color it and then what's the difference between an inker and a color uh an inker they they take the penciled artwork and they refine it and ah uh, okay darken they're, the lines yep they're kind of setting it in stone basically right. yeah yep. really tighten it really tighten it up some guys have higher inkers some guys do it themselves and then colorists, they take the inked art and actually color it. And, right? and yep, fill in. Yeah. So then when they're done, then the letterer takes it and they take the script and put the word balloons <laughs> in there. Very cool. So there's a whole process. But I mean, another reason it took me so long is I was trying to do all of that. And you look at most comics today and you open the first page and in, in the front is a bunch of people. Yeah. You know, and the way they do it is while someone's drawing a page, they've handed the the next page off to someone. It's like an someone. assembly line. Yeah. yeah. And so it gets done fast. But if you have one person doing it, I mean, it takes time. And so what I did was I drew it out and uh, I started coloring it. And I colored like, I don't know, 65 pages of this thing. And, Jeez. I, was, and I was like, it was it's 162 pages. And I was... I was just talking to Doug. I was like, man, this is going to take me forever because I'm drawing pages, you know, and inking and then coloring. Yeah. And uh, so we got a colorist to finish it off. 
and her name's Michelle Madsen, and she's done a lot of comics through through uh, the Mignola verse, and uh, she finished it off, and she's awesome. And I I gave her notes, and she would finish it off, and and so I mean, doing this whole series, I kind of uh, learned the lesson that you know it's it's probably better to have help yeah. than to try to do have it all team. yourself. Yep. Yeah, because yep. you get done faster. <clears throat> Especially when you're starting at eight nine o'clock at night and yeah. <laughs> going until three a.m. Oh goodness, yeah, you do. You flip open a comic book today, you see a whole slew of people written yeah. by, penciled by, inked by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild. So you said you have how many? How many pages do you have? So the series is 162 pages. So 162 pages, but that's not all going to be for those who are you know, comic illiterate and don't really know the whole process. Yeah. That's not all in one issue, right? Right. Yeah. So that's going to be split up over an entire series. And how many issues do you have in the series? So usually a regular comic is like 21 to 25 pages, right? Yep. And we're doing giant size, which means it's double the pages. Mm. So we're doing four issues and each issue is 45 pages. Wow. That's so a lot. It's a lot. That is a lot. But it's going to be good when you get a big thick no chunk kidding. of the comics yeah. to read for know? sure and it, i mean i drew it kind of influenced a little bit by manga which is um manga has a lot of pages and so it's more fast paced reading and so i mean so i think it's going to go by pretty quick mm -hmm. and so having that extra pages is going to feel you're not going to just read through 25 pages and be like well that was it yeah you know yeah and you, you basically, you have it mapped out so the whole series is completed, and now you get to just start dropping issue by issue. Yeah. Correct? Yes. So is that, you're going to go on like a like a monthly basis then per issue, or how, yeah. how what's your guys' plans with that? Yeah. It's going to be every month. So the first issue comes out June 22nd. June 22nd. Yep. And then the following months, it's going to drop. Yeah. So there so. you go, for, for people that pick up your comics that's that's what you can kind of look forward to is uh getting issue by issue and we yep. we we see if uh see if that eye is going to get back i'm still i'm yeah. waiting i'm waiting <laughs> I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with that eye well that's awesome man yeah that's cool i i think it's super fascinating just for i mean just for those who it's it's like that behind the scene where you don't know what goes into something where we've all grown up reading comics right but just every single detail of every single page like somebody was sitting in a studio at one o'clock in the morning penciling that yeah. in so we can enjoy it you know what i mean i yeah. think that's something that not a lot of people like that doesn't really cross your mind when you're yeah. enjoying and, and, and reading a too comic book. one page can take me from eight to 14 hours you yeah know? just on one page yeah or when you're reading it you just go through it you know <laughs> right oh so. man that is just a crazy amount of work. It's a lot of work. And that's, I mean, that's why I say comics is probably the hardest art job. Yeah. You know, because it takes some, it takes a lot. You have to know a lot to do a comic. Especially if you're doing it all by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just think, as soon as Ben gets that, he's not even going to open it. He's just going to send it off to CGC <laughs> and get it graded and, hey, I'm gonna, <laughs> and I'm slab. Send one to CGC. <laughs> We're going to be like, Ben, how is that story? Well, I don't know. It's sitting in a slab on my wall and I've never read it. I'm going to sign mine and send it to hey, CGC and they'll reject it. Hey, this like, is, there's writing on it. <laughs> to, to, it. to anybody listening that wants to pick up Tim's comic, this is, I'll, I'll give you, because Ben's not on a mic, I'll give you Ben's word of advice. When you shop for comics, especially when you're shopping for Beware of the Eye of Odin, you get two issues. Mm -hmm. You get one that you can put in a sleeve and put in a box and never touch it again. It stays <laughs> crisp, clean, pristine, and it is now a collectible. You get your second one, so you can just roll those pages and read that baby all roll night up, long. Put it in your yep. back pocket, take yep. it a lunch. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, but there you go, Ben. I, I threw your two cents in there. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Nothing. Um, what, what comics are you currently reading? Yeah. Who, who, who are your okay. current favorites? Um, currently, let me think, let me think. Um, I, I love Hellboy. Oh yeah. You're doing a lot of fun stuff with Hellboy. I like Hellboy cause it's, um, confined stories. I mean, I like a lot of the Marvel and DC characters and stuff, but 
you know, these things go on for so long and you just can't keep them sorted, you know, like what's going on. And, um, Hellboy, it seems like the stories just play out and then it's over with. Right. Mm. And if you missed one of those, it's, it doesn't really connect. You don't really have to know that one for the next one, but I, I really like Hellboy and it's really different. Um, what else? I mean, Ooh, head lopper. You guys read that? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, that one's really awesome. It's like a barbarian, and uh, he's got this severed witch head that he carries around, and she <laughs> talks and stuff. Oh, nice. And, yeah, and she's always, like, ripping on him, and <laughs> yeah. you're just like, why is he carrying this head? <laughs> and it's called Head Lopper, and he's always cutting the heads off of creatures and stuff. It's really awesome. <laughs> head Lopper, and then uh, what else? I mean, Daniel Warren Johnson stuff. Um all his stuff is awesome. He's got uh, Extremity. This, these are from Image. Extremity, Murder Falcon. He did a series. Uh, Beta Ray Bill. He did oh, yeah. Dead Earth. Wonder Woman. I like his art because it's there's a lot of energy and stuff in it. Um, is, he's a really good storyteller. Is it is it normal for artists to jump from like different like comic book universes or like different comic book companies? Cause you just read, you just yeah. said a bunch there. Is that, yeah. is that the norm? I think, I mean, I follow artists. My bookshelf is all like, it's hard. It's not, I mean, yeah, maybe it's Marvel DC, like divide up Marvel DC, but mostly it's artists. Mm. It's like, here's Daniel Warren Johnson's shelf. Here's yeah. Eric Larson's shelf. Here's uh Sean Gordon Murphy shelf, you know? Yeah. So, I, I totally get that. I mean, Ben and I have talked about this too, where I've, even with my comic book collection, I've, Oftentimes, when when people ask if I collect comics, it's like, well, I'm an art collector. I, I collect <laughs> art. There's definitely, because, I mean, you got those issues where it's a certain cover. I mean, you don't even yeah. have to read it. You come across the cover, and it's, it's just like, like, that's awesome. That is the coolest thing ever, and I have to have it. Yeah, for sure. Yep. It's interesting, too, because, like, with... <laughs> like with Johnny and myself, some, sometimes our collections, like our pops or our, I don't have comics, but he does, but like the, the value in our collectibles are more valuable than our vehicle. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It's, like, it's so true. <laughs> it's like, I put more value in my interests than my car. Yeah. yeah. I, I've got a lot of stuff. I, I told my wife, like I had some medical issues. I told my wife, I was like, if I die, Mm-hmm. You need to look up these things on my shelf before you just give them away or sell them. Because I mean, I have a lot of stuff. I mean, I I recently sold an action figure for a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! On eBay. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to sell it, but I I uh, I needed to. But I told her I was like, you need to know <laughs> yeah, what you're this selling. Is, yeah. This is not going to Goodwill in yeah. <laughs> in, in a cardboard box, okay? Yeah. Or the kids playing with it. Would yeah. probably, I mean, they'll, they'll enjoy it. That's fine, but. You probably make some money on it. Yeah. You know. So oh, speaking of that, I caught wind that somebody you may have been shocked to find out a celebrity or somebody had some of your artwork or something. Oh, What's the story with that? Yeah, uh a couple things. So <laughs> <laughs> buckle up everybody. <laughs> buckle here, up, here, here we go. <laughs> so my my uh sister in law worked for Carrie Fisher estate. Right. Oh, worked boy. for Carrie Fisher and knew her, right? Oh boy! And I did, <laughs> and I did some art of Princess Leia and Han Solo, and some Ewoks and stuff, right? And they're really kind of cute and cartoony. They were kind of like chibi, but not quite. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I gave them to my brother, and that she ended up showing Carrie Fisher, and Carrie Fisher <laughs> like signed one for me and stuff oh my gosh so it's cool so i got this art of princess leia with carrie fisher's signature i was like wow this is amazing and uh, she passed away and my sister-in-law was said oh you gotta see this um she was they they were uh they had a big auction of her estate all the things she owned and some were like original costumes from her movies and stuff. And she had a section that was art. And there were like these cool paintings, like famous paintings. And and in the corner there was my little, <laughs> some of my art in her. No way. Thing that she was having oh auctioned gosh. off, you know. And it's like, wow, she kept it. That's amazing. And it meant enough to her that she like kept it. You no know? way. So it was cool. That's super cool. So that is that's incredible. Not many have a story like that one. <laughs> yeah. that's, oh, 
that that is yeah. super cool and luke is listening to this punching the air right now <laughs> yeah. because he wasn't here <laughs> luke is our other soda nerd and he's a huge star wars fan so yeah, yeah that is the other one was johnny depp he came to my house once. Oh my I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Him and Amber Hearst showed up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a Jack Sparrow and Aqua Woman or whatever yeah. shit. Oh, no. goodness. No. The other one was um, Jeremy Bullock, who was original Boba Fett. Mm. Oh. I was at a convention. I was selling a print of Boba Fett, and he saw that and loved it. And he he uh, bought one from me. Wow. It was cool. That is sweet. So, so you're drawing art of Star Wars characters and the Star Wars cast. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you go to a convention, you see them all, people mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I don't think I... I mean, I'm not like... I don't really need Carrie Fisher's signature. I don't need like some of these celebrity signatures, but it's yeah. like, oh, that's cool. I mean... That's really cool. Yeah. They dug it. You don't need her signature, let alone she's having your artwork <laughs> auctioned yeah. off in her estate. It, it, I mean, it's cool, but I mean, what does it give me? Well, exactly, you know? but it gives you a cool story. <laughs> that's yeah. a cool yeah. story. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Gives you a cool so, story. Yeah, that is awesome. But what was your question? I don't know. What did that? How did that come up? Oh, what, what did you throw that one out? I did. Oh, yeah, yeah you okay. did. Just, yeah. <laughs> No, just uh, that I had, I had heard from somebody that you have an interesting celebrity story. So Jeff's been Jeff's been uh, stalking you all week. So in, don't quit it in, <laughs> in preparation. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know what else you have on there, but I have a couple more questions nope, as we as ahead. we get close Go to ahead. close to wrapping this up. But I just I mainly wanted to ask, um, really, what artists everybody's got inspiration right yeah so like what artists well obviously we've talked about since nine years old you've from technical terms you've been a professional comic book artist but but what artists along the way have you really it's just like anytime you see it it just resonates with you and and it's just been maybe an inspiration for i know you talked a little bit with jeff but just an inspiration for for what you do that that's number one and then number two um comic book actual single issues maybe like a favorite cover yeah. that's out there or like a holy grail that you'd like to have oh geez that's a that's rough comic book artist there's so many and it seems like it's sometimes it's like music where it's like an era you like a certain uh, yeah yeah uh, certain guy phases yeah. yeah like uh like rob liefeld loved him I, I, everything he's done for comics is amazing. And I'm, I I think he's, uh, accomplished a lot. Right. I mean, he's not the most sound, uh, with his anatomy, but it doesn't matter. I mean, Jack Kirby wasn't, Mm. you know, what he brought to the table was cool. But, um, so, I mean, every area there's someone, but I'd, I'd say my, my favorite ones, I mean, Eric Larson made a huge impact on me. Love, love his storytelling. And uh, from there, I mean, Ryan Otley and Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman's story structure is the same as Eric Larson. Yeah. And and a lot of people say that 90s comics storytelling was garbage. Um, have they read Savage Dragon? I mean, I think Savage Dragon issue to issue is pretty solid. Yeah. And pretty fun. And if you haven't, I mean, I'd suggest go back and check that out. Because he, he, uh, Eric Larson was really good with cliffhangers and introdu- introducing characters and killing them. And Robert Kirkman, I think he took that and expanded upon it because I like after I, I left comic, I, I stopped reading comics for a while. And I mean, Savage Dragon was my favorite comics in the 90s. And then, um, when I got back into it, I found out about this Invincible and I tried it and I was like, whoa, this is similar storytelling to Savage Dragon because there's always a killer cliffhanger and there's always a new character that's cool. And uh, it really resonated with me. And then so like, I mean, I started Invincible issue eight and I bought all of them, you know, every month I got that yeah. because of the storytelling. And um I mean, Walking Dead, I started, I read all the Tony Moore stuff and then I kind of stopped. It had the, it had, it had really good cliffhangers and stuff, but it just got too heavy for me. Yeah. You know? So those guys were pretty influ- influential, but, um, I mean, there's just so many. Yeah. 
I mean, I, it, it really is hard to nail it down. It and and like you said, it is like an ever changing stream of influence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now, uh, the Daniel Warren Johnson art is just killer for me right now because he's like one of the best with his energy, like fighting and all that. And mm -hmm. I just really dig it. And he's got a unique take on things. Um, I'm really interested on a new, fresh view of a character instead of the same, um, the same old stuff. So he, he does that really well. Um, cover wise, I think the best cover artist is Dave Johnson. Do you know who that guy is? Mm -mm. Oh, you got to look him up. He's, he does covers for everybody. And there was a mini series, um, a Super Patriot miniseries. I don't know if you know about that. That came out in the 90s. It's an image comic. I think it's the best thing that came out of image. <laughs> and there's a lot of tech. He's really good at drawing tech and stuff. But uh, look him up. He's a killer cover artist. Yeah, what's his like name again? Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson. Like every cover he does is just badass. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, I'm not a super fan of Star Trek, but he could do a cover for Star Trek and you'd be like, wow, he's amazing. <laughs> wow, he made Star Trek yeah. look good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, check him out. I mean, um, yeah, there's there's tons. So those are the ones I'm, I'm digging now. But what was that second question? Yeah, so I want to know, because I a lot of the comics that I collect personally, it's kind of like cover art. I, I really, there's a, a large section of my collection that, were purchased specifically off of the way that the cover looked. Yeah. Um, and if you have kind of like a, a favorite comic book cover that you could think of. No, oh, man, that's tough. <laughs> it is. I it mean, is. how many, how many issues are in the world? I mean, I think it, the Dave Johnson art yeah. is like yeah, something yeah. that is like, it's not him in the interiors, but I'd buy it. Yeah. You know, he did a run of Captain America in the 2000s that was really awesome. Um, the thing is with him is it's not just a character standing there looking mm -hmm. cool. It's always like there's always a story or some really cool design element. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I don't know if there's a specific one that I'm after, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be it'd be cool to have like a Hellboy number one or okay something like that, but that's that's, that's the mini grail for Tim. Yeah, I <laughs> guess. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um. I mean, we all want an amazing fantasy fifteen, but we're yeah. not all gonna own one. That's for sure. We don't all have three and a half million dollars. So yeah. Anything, so. So. Yeah, there's there there's a lot, and I mean, it's even the collecting is ever changing too. Like you're what you're gonna want to collect for many given time changes just because new stuff comes out or you have a new period of time where you're interested in something different, like you said. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like it is ever changing, but before we go here, Tim, I just, uh, I, I want to, again, thank you for coming on, but also yeah. want you to let the listeners know where they can pick up. Beware of the eye of Odin yeah. coming out June 22nd. Well, um, it will be in all your local comic shops, June 22nd. Um, if you help, you want to help me out and make sure you get it, you can go to your local comic shop and request it. Um, our cutoff uh, order date is May 30th, coming up quick. Yeah. And uh, pre-order it, put it in your hold before then, because you're not guaranteed that, I mean, some comic shops only get the top, you know, image and then the rest, Marvel yeah. and DC. So um, don't gamble if you really want it. <laughs> yeah. Put it in your hold. And then, uh, yeah, June 22nd, when the first issue hits the stands. Okay. So. Good deal. Awesome. There you go, everybody. You heard it from uh, Tim Olin, uh, local comic book artist. Beware of the Eye of Odin coming out June 22nd. And get in before May 30th to uh, get that placed on hold for you. We are going to see if that eye gets back. I am ready to read it. I hope everybody else is. Uh, for everybody listening on the podcast, if you could just leave us a quick review, we appreciate all the help that we can get. And if you are on, uh, if you are on YouTube, make sure to leave a comment with some other future ideas. But uh, yeah, go check out Tim's stuff. And uh, thanks for being on here, Tim. We're we're excited to read the new book and see how it goes for awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. All right, everybody. We will catch you on the next episode. Deuces. Bye. <laughs> Sota Nerd. <laughs>